Although most of the songs in this uh, second series of Mended Folk Songs were have strong associations with Hunter's Lodge, I have included a couple more that are much earlier in date from the time of the cave diving group's exploits at Wookie, written by Mossy Powell. Lads and lasses come with me to the village of Pretty in the heart of Mendip on top of the hill. Oh, why not stop at the Hunter's Pub? There you'll meet the caving clubs. They're the ones that put for the boys of the hill. On Saturday, havers come from miles around. On Saturday night, they'll all be found raising their tankards and having their fill. The Shepton Brood, the MCG, the Wessex, and the BEC. They're the boys that get called the boys of the hill. Oh, why not stop and have a jar in that good old flagstone bar? There's plenty of barrels of Roger's fine ale. Oh, why not try the buck and brew? That's the stuff for me and you. We'll all have a pint, say the boys of the hill. In the back room you will find music there of every kind. Old songs and new songs, they sing them still. Some's all right and some are good. Some are downright rude and crude. We like they words, say the boys of the hill. The Bodrums, rattle singers sing, they nearly make the rafters ring. Squeeze boxes play and the fiddle wire is shrill. Simon's on melodeon. Tony Jarrett's pissed again. Aye, aren't we all, say the boys of the hill. Well, I'm not done. <laughs> boys and lasses come with me to the village of Pretty. In the heart of Mendip on top of the hill. Why not stop at Hunter's Club? There you find the caving clubs. See you next week, say the boys of the hill. A local bloke from Rodney Stoke, more fond of beer than labour, was recommended by a friend to go and be a caver. He said, your first is not the first of such capacity. I know a crowd who do you proud. Go join the BEC. Go join the BEC. Go join the BEC, that boozing crew will do for you. Go join the BEC, the MCG, the Blue Fended Tea, which makes them rather merry. Their Spelios look down their nose, a tipple worse than sherry. The Shepton Brood are rude and crude while boozing at the local. But worse by far, the Wessex are exclusively teetotal. We are the BEC, down with sobriety. Throw out your chest, cry beer is best, and join the BEC. Each Friday night, we all get tight as soon as we are able. By half past eight, we lie in state beneath the belfry table. By nine o'clock, our knees may knock, we stagger out despite them. By half past ten, we're pissed again. And on an infinitum, we are the BEC. And this we must confess. Whatever is worth doing, we will do it to excess. Well, this building behind me was the original Shepton Mallet Caving Club hut in the 60s, and it was known colloquially as the, the um, fold, because there were rather a lot of jokes about sheep. And this is one of the little ditties that other clubs sang about the Shepton. We are the Shepton Cave Club, a family clique are we. Ken Dory is our leader, our clever buggery. He leads us over fields and stiles, down potholes vast and deep. Because we follow meekly, we're called the Shepton Sheep. We've dug in South East Inlet, we've dug on pretty green. And in between the digging we're really quite obscene. 
We tell prospective members with regularity. Go do just what the song says and join the BC. Well, this song was uh, written by Mossy Powell, one of uh, Graham Balcom's cave diving group in 1935. And this pond behind me is where they did the initial training. A Balkum, as you know by now, was seized by notions clear queer. He's diving on the Mendips and there ain't no water there. He called his troops together on the wall of gravy and dump and announced his new intention, saying, Pump, you buggers, pump. He covered up his box of tricks with canvas pure and pale then tootled down to Cheddar to get Mossy out of bail. Now you and Ting must guard my store or you'll have cause to jump. So keep the frogs and lizards out of pump, you buggers, pump. He won a lovely diving suit from distant London town. He tried to catch the tadpoles as they wriggled up and down. Then moved it off the wookie hole where Captain got the hump. For balk and bust the telephone with pump, you buggers, pump. Some fat man came to BBC, what Balkan meant to do, and bought their war entanglements and left them in full view. The gang produced the diving gear and stacked it in a hump lump, so Balkan promptly shattered Mike with pump, you buggers, pump. So now he leaves on the shore beside his muddy tracks and dallies with the mermaids in the green and limpid axe. But all night long we listen in and many a heart goes thump. When he rudely brings us back to earth, we'll pump you buggers, pump! Yeah. I've walked over Mendip, past Wildens and White Pit, I've drunk in the Hunters and sung a fine tune. I've crept home from pretty, me legs none too steady, and slept neath the light of a summer set moon. When I was a young man, I used to go caving. Some said I was raving to venture below. I'll have found in the earth and its innermost splendour A grandeur Terranians never can know I've learned about friendship deep down under Mendip Where many a pal's pulled me out of a mess And what's more fulfilling and thrilling, I ask you Than helping to rescue a friend in distress I once followed a map to the sump I was trapped in I swore that no more I would play in the clay But they pulled me out, dried me with Buckham, revived me The outcome was I was back the next day While my elbows are sore, I my mean, knees they are raw These legs won't support this old caver no more But I watch the young lads and the lasses descending Those caverns of Mendip as I did before I've walked over Mendip, past Wildens and White Pit. I've drunk in the Hunters and played a fine tune. I've crept home from pretty, me legs none too steady, and slept by the light of a Somerset moon. Well, that song was written by Vin Gar, but apparently for Tony Jarrett, I used to take him caving. When this lousy trip is over, Caving meets for me when I get my boozing clothes on. Oh, how happy I shall be! No more rescue calls on Sunday, no more water down my sleeve. Fond farewell, my caving comrades. How they'll miss me, how I. I was stood in the Hunter's Lodge bar, sir, with a chap from the MNRC. When the caver came in in a flap, sir, with a coat bought from WD. I've orders from our brave commander, it's time for the Ouija's to pay. We're to meet on the green after closing, the boys of the bold MRA. Well, the boy seen on the green after closing was a sight for sad eyes to behold. With MRI armbands a glistening, the shepherd marched in from the fold. 
there were belfry lights drunken and ready, and Sandhurst chaps brewing up tea, and Spelio's tippling sherry, for the Wessex were having a pee. Well, we set up the barriers, well sir, the cheddar rope blocked it was plain. When the very first busload of Ouija's was diverted down Nine Barrows Lane. Well, Nine Barrows Lane is quite narrow, not suited for traffic like this. And the boys, they all laughed till they cried, sir, when the Wessex were having a piss. Well, the coaches and cars for the Ouija's continued to turn round the bend. So the very first culture was leading, they came to a sudden dead end. The traffic was nose to tell me boys, and one or two cars had a smash. And the boys they all laughed and they cried, sir, what a Wessex for having a slash. So we put back the barriers, well sir, the signposts back where they were. And Nine Barrows Lane was more jammed, sir, with more traffic had seen there for years. So here's to the Ouija's of Mendip, who thought they all knew what was what. And the Mendip Republican Army, who made shite at the whole bloody lot. The tattered remnants of a Shepton ladder. Those slipping rungs that make you even madder. A snap in lifelines ping, these mended things remind me of you. Boom, 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 boom. The shredded wetsuit from the nutmeg grater. The turds that float around in Stoke Lane's locker. Oh, how the smell of it clings, these mended things remind me of you. Boom, ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom. The cave called Swildens, where we first went caving. There's muddy sumps that lead constant bailing. Away we used to sing. These mended things remind me of you. The hardhead cavers in the cave at Wookie. The rare occasions when you got your nookie. Oh, how that soldier lime stings. These mended things remind me of you. On Saturday night, the diving game, that wild and fearless crew, with ropes and pumps and scarlet hats and shirts of navy blue, come rumbling down from mended pipes to Wookie Hole to pitch. Oh, call the captain quickly, boys, to chaperone the witch. Be glad they were the wildest crew that ever entered the cave. The Celties and the Roman Brits lay like quaking in their graves. They'll use a pound of gel ignite to open every itch. Oh, call the captain quickly, boys, to chaperone the witch. The diver takes some hiding down. It's not done with lead and weights. His fearful boots are made of brass, as safety does dictate. Ranging his 300 boys before he reaches a hitch. Oh, call the captain quickly, boys, to chaperone the witch. On Saturday morn before they go, they take a last look round, and everything that's looked undone will surely will be found. The mermaids in the river act like they're swooning in their ditch. Oh, call the captain quickly, boys, to chaperone the witch. Pen Ballack trips and listens to the noises in her cave. She wonders if it's worth the fact to keep her virtue safe. She trembles as they fast pass her by and shout, What's your old bitch? Oh, call the captain quickly, boys, to chaperone the witch. Well, Elfie Collins was a legend in Mendic folklore, not just for the songs he wrote, but for these um, speleoed poems which was sort of in the style of a radio comedian called Cyril Fletcher. This is a typical one. The nautical narrative of Percy Pound. Well, no one can deliver these like Elfie could, but at least I'll give you an idea of how they went. This is the tale of Percy Pound, who hated ladders underground. And furthermore, this forthright bloke, we're off remark, a joke's a joke, but blast the man who clambers higher by pulling on his wrist and wire. The strain it puts on arms and wrists would drive a bloke clean round the twist. 
and in conditions cold and damp, he fall a prey to tankard's cramp. We must admit on the face of things, our purse had quite a case. The elephant is so it seems, not even in its wildest dreams, cavorts about on ladders which are dangled down some dicey pitch, and purse, in this respect at least, resembled that sagacious beast. One day some blokes on pretty green, that scented subterranean scene, were looking for a place to sit, remote from what is called grit, and peering down a smallish pot grot slot, discovered a fantastic pot, which dropped two hundred feet or more, and led straight into Swildon's fall. Imagine the enthusiasm endangered by this fearsome cavern, as cavers heard the splendid news and rushed to buy each other booze. With keenness wonderful to see, except of course our Percy P, who like the ostrich when it sees another ostrich on its knees, with head in sand, in rumping air, could hardly adjectival care. But thought instead that in that rift, someone should install a lift. Now lift, from Percy's point of view, suffered from a snag or two, as anyone who's tried to shift by stealth a large electric lift, complete with massive counterweight, will readily appreciate. Then suddenly with crafty leer, Purse had a fabulous idea. All week he worked by day and night, with wood and steel and araldite. Then to an audience astounded, our Purse's crafty scheme expounded. I've made, he said, a kind of gate, of half-inch welded boiler plate, which weighing lower down the drop, the stream effectively will stop. The waters, nudged by this door from getting into Swildon's fore, will then, before your very eyes, inexorably start to rise. And when the pot is brimming full, a crafty lever I shall pull, arranging in the gate below a nicely regulated flow enabling me to downward float in cunningly constructed boat. And when I've had a look around on marring caverns underground, I firmly close the lower door and float back up again once more. All other caving types can then float up and down like gentlemen. This simple but effective plan appealed at once to every man who rushed from pubs with wild abandon pausing just to lay their hands on sufficient quantities of ale, their thirst and spirits to regale while, while, while away the lengthy wait while Percy lowered down the gate. As gradually through every pot in Swildon's every rift and grot, exactly as you might suppose, the water level slowly rose, till Percy's gate was neatly clogging up 15,000 tonnes of oggin. Then let us all deliberate upon this somewhat dodgy state. The pressures great which oft appear on Sunday mornings after beer were nothing to the pressures which existed lower down that pitch. O oh, leading seamen, do not weep. It was not me that gagged the, spe gagged the, she <laughs> gagged the deep, but Percy through his sluice gate tough, who wrapped it round its rock face rough. With any luck there ought to be, some ruddy great catastrophe. As Percy Pound, that steamy nit, was yelling, left hand down a bit, to launch his cunning homemade craft, into the water in the shaft there came a sub dreadful burping sound. And then the boat and Percy Pound performed a most amazing stunt by going sharp end over blunt. And hurtled down that empty shaft, still going midships over aft, You'd think that Purse would have his lot by falling down this dreadful pot. But though he cropped a nasty packet and got a badly fractured bracket by bashing it against the wheel, he landed on an even keel. And then with terrifying bump, the torrent tore out sup, duck and sump and carried Purse in regions whence it flowed through passages immense. Till finally it reached its goal the lower end of Alfie's hole. If I describe these caverns great, you'll think that I exaggerate. So let's draw a modest veil upon this portion of our tale, and follow Purse as with a crash, one final sump the water smash, 
to carry Percy still afloat to Wookie Hole complete with boat. As midst the waters wildly pitching, he landed in the witch's kitchen, astounding every caving bloke who expected him at Rodney Stoke. And thus today our Percy Pound runs steamer trips beneath the ground and navigates the Mendip Queen from Wookie Hole to Pretty Green. A life upon the ocean wave is lived by Percy in a cave. Just a gloom like twilight as my lamp burns low and the rippering blackness softly comes and goes every time this happens with a carbide light is the tackle master doing things right the lazy bloody shite It's difficult to realise when I started caving in 1959 those carbide lamps, commonly known as stinkies were the preferred uh, method of lighting and yet even before that the early explorers here in Goat Church, would you believe, caved with candles. They were referred to as Vulture's Dependent Illuminant or BDIs. The wag said it cast no treacherous shadow because it gave no bloody light. Well, the best anthology of caving songs is probably They Words, They Words, They Horrible Words by Nick Cornwell Smith, which includes not only Mendy but other songs as well. It's worth reading because although many of them have probably only have ever been sung once, to be honest, they, if you read them as poetry, they really give you a feel for caving as it was and is. But it does omit one song that the Wessex wrote, a very short one that goes. Down in cow hole, yeah. Hillgrove cat's dead. Oh. Oh.